All right, so this is chapter 15, layering and division. So your learning targets or chapter outcomes are discuss the uses of layering and propagation, describe the layering techniques used by growers, and describe the different types of natural layering. Um, explain the process of crown division, identify types of geophytes, and summarize their propagation methods. List careers related to layering and division. So layering and division, they're showing you a picture of hostas. These are really popular um, perennial plant, so it comes up every year. Um, so layering is vegetative or asexual propagation technique that allows stems that are still attached to the parent plant to form roots. Division, one plant is divided to create multiple plants. So that's the difference between those two. So layering in propagation, there's an asexual technique. Um, stems attached to parent plant, stems forms adventitious roots. Then stem pulls in water, nutrients, sugars, and hormones. Um, so layering and propagation, you have to consider the following. Attachment of stem to parent plant. Accumulation of sugars and oxen to the rooting area. Um, exclusion of light in the rooting area. And then stock plant invigoration and seasonal timing. Uh, the practice of layering is most successful when the above elements are considered. So you have to look at all of those pieces in order to um, determine when they should be propagated. So you may have heard, so like the previous slide had a hosta on it. If I'm going to dig it up and make more of that plant, it works well if I do that in the fall. Some plants prefer that in the spring. Um, so this is showing you layering and propagation. So this is showing you they're basically forcing... This is the parent plant. Maybe something happened to it. It looks like it got chopped off, right? Um, they're taking one of the shoots. They're forcing it into the ground and then um, staking the growth that they want to have produce roots. This works actually really well with willow trees. Um, so there's some techniques too. They have simple compound, air layering, mound layering, and trench layering, which the next slides go through. So simple layering, you have flexible low growing stem is bent to the ground, partially covered with soil, and then bent portion forms adventitious roots. Um, so they're just showing you the drawing here, same concept here, they call that simple layering. This is compound layering, it's the same concept except for they're taking that same branch and doing it several times. So basically they're gonna take eventually and cut this apart to make several different plants. Um, compound layering, once the four inch shoot uh, present, the shallow trench is dug, the shoots are held in by wire, the shoots held in, in by wire pegs, they're going to fill it with soil as they grow, and then they're going to do serpentine layering. Oh, and then serpentine layering. That's a variation of compound layering where the shoots are laid horizontally in the ground. Some buds are exposed while others are covered with soil in an alternating pattern. And that's what they're trying to show you here is the serpentine layering. Um, air layering. So this is the image here that you're looking at is a wound that's wrapped with sphagnum moss and covered in plastic. Um, by doing that, they're gonna, it's providing a moist, dark space for the roots to initiate and grow. Um, they kind of, it's basically, they, it looks like a little girdle that they wrapped around the stems. Um, this one has moss in it, which is a rooting medium, and they're going to hope that the roots form. This one is air layering. So they chose an area of 12 inches from the shoot tip below a node. There's no leaf on the stem, three to four inches in either direction. They're going to do what they call girdling the stem. They expose the inner woody tissue and eliminate the cambial tissue. They're going to basically scrape it. And this one is mound layering. So the soil is piled on a plant crown, most commercially important method, also known as hilling. Um, so they're just basically like the image shows you, piling soil on top of that and, you know, promoting it to grow. Trench lay excuse me, trench layering is used for woody plant material. Mother plant in a sloping position. 
They allow shoots to be shoots to be layered horizontally, pegged to base of a trench, and then the loose rooting medium is filled around the shoots. Um, and then we're on tip layers. Um, shoot tip inserted into the soil grows downward and roots become a new plant. Then there's natural layering. This is a picture of strawberries. If you've dealt with strawberries before, kind of the biggest pain in the butt is the fact that they have runners. Um, sometimes you have to cut the runners in order for them to stop producing so much because they'll try, some plants will get stuck on the concept of producing more of the plant and then not produce your strawberries. Um, they do have specialized stems. They run horizontally above the ground that will form new plants. So if I clip the runners, I can make more plants out of that just by clipping them. Um, natural layering, this is a whole bunch of stolons. Basically, your grass plants are going to be stolons. Um, they have similar, they're basically similar to runners. They have a horizontal stem below the ground and produce plants and tubers. You may have had that experience where you pull up a blade of grass, and if you get a whole big long string of the roots, you have a whole bunch of grass blades or leaf blades that you'll see show up. And here is another, this is offsets. Um, lateral shoots or branches form at the base of the main stem. Um, it's primarily monocot plants that'll do that. They can be cut from the main stem and create new plants. So I could take, if you notice, this is a baby plant here. Um, that is, this doesn't tell me, this looks like a banana tree. Um, but I could take and dig it up carefully to try not to damage the parent plant and still get roots. Um, and actually just take this and plant it separately. And this... This is so cool. I love pineapples um, and the way they grow is so funky. So this is actually, if I took this top off, the whole concept, you can try this. The hard part, it takes two years to grow a new pineapple. If you take the top off, if you get a fresh pineapple, you can plant it. You have to pluck the bottom leaves off here. Um, let it dry out for a day or two and then plant it in soil. And then eventually your pineapple will grow here. So it's kind of a cool process. Um, these ones are actually um, what they call suckers. So... This is actually a commercial pineapple field that you're looking at. Roses do this. Lilacs also do this. But the shoot that grows from an adventitious bud on a root is actually called a sucker. You can prune or remove that. And then crown division. I tend to do a lot of this. I have, once again, we have hostas here. Uh, my grandfather used to collect hosta varieties, so I have a whole bunch of his in my yard. Um, so far that I know of, they've lived in three different places from my old house, from my grandparents' house to my old house to the new house. Um, but you honestly, by doing this, you're helping the plant. They can actually overcrowd themselves and then be competitors for itself. Um, it's herbaceous perennials. It's very common with, you've probably seen family members do this too. You can also do it with woody shrubs. You basically dig it up from the soil, divide them into sections, and then transplant them. And typically what I will do is, you know, share some of the pieces of the plant and then put the, a portion of the plant back where I dug it out initially. Um, division and separation of geophytes. So geophytes, they're underground storage structures. It could be bulbs, corms, tubers, rhizomes, and then pseudobulbs, which we'll get into. So bulbs, they are considered modified stems. They're fleshy scales. They have a shoot and bulblets. Um, and then you can see too, so this one is a tulip bulb. And the bulblet is obviously, it's a smaller bulb that you would dig up to. They're going to be a smaller plant, but eventually grow larger. Um, when you separate bulbs, they will increase in size. The small bulbs will be separated, planted, and then grown. Um, they eventually will produce offset bulbs and they can be re replanted. This is just showing you some other options. So they have tunicate bulbs, which um, laminate bulbs that have outer bulb scale that are dry. So this is onion, garlic, daffodils, tulips, amaryllis. The picture is actually, this one is amaryllis. They tend to be popular at Christmas time. The non tunicate bulbs are scaly bulbs that do not have a dry covering. So think of like an onion skin on these guys, okay? These ones are a bulb that's basically naked. It doesn't have that papery skin. Um, they have separate scales that are attached to the basal plate. Um, a lot of times they'll be on like a lily. So bulb propagation, you dig out the bulb, they separate them. 
New bulbs are graded by size and they should be stored 65 to 68 degrees Fahrenheit and then planted according to their size. So you can actually take and scale them. Um, you can do leaf cuttings. So, and this is a lot of times too, like Narcissus, which is a flower. Um, they'll take and go ahead and scale them. They place them in rooting medium and they'll increase in size over time. And then you have corms. Corms are a modified enlarged stem. They are a storage organ, the method of reproduction, um, process for propagation. So the corm is dug, new corms and cormals are separated and then planted for further growth. Tubers, which you can see is a lot of our favorite. There's a potato. Um, they have modified and large stems specialized for underground storage. And if you've ever let a bag of potatoes sit in your on your counter or in your cupboard for too long, you'll note that they start to look like this at the eyes. They'll start to grow roots or um, plumules. So it's kind of cool how you can actually take a potato, cut it, plant it, and have many more potatoes. Um, so I already mentioned they have to have one or more eyes if when you cut that section in order to plant it. Um, a lot of times when they plant them too, they do a hill system or a mound system to grow them. Um, tuberous roots, they're enlarged secondary roots. The propagation methods will vary. Those are a daily on that picture. Um, this picture you have sugar cane on this one, and then this is ginger. Okay, so they're a modified stem structure that grows horizontally, produce roots on the bottom and shoots on the top. And they're propagated through division, divided after flowering and combs can develop. This is actually bamboo shoots that are emerging. And then you have pseudo bulbs. Pseudo means false. Um, anything that you look at, the word right here, pseudo, this chunk, is false. So it's a false bulb. It's a swollen, fleshy stem structure. It's a specialized storage organ, and it's going to vary by species. This is actually an orchid here that's growing on a tree. And then your career connection. The first one you have is a fruit nursery propagator. They manage the stock plants, propagate different types of fruit. Um, they're going to care for the rooted, basically the, the ones that they did the cuttings on, those prop, propagules. Uh, they should be really good at record keeping and have um, high school diploma. Obviously, this is not a common thing in our area. We don't have the fruit, citrus, none of those crops. So you're going to be in a more tropical type climate compared to Minnesota. Um, orchard manager. They manage the health of fruit trees and orchard ecosystem. Um, you'd be dealing with a lot of pest situations and possibly people. A lot of orchards get open up to the public for another source of income. Um, they might deal with fertilizing, spraying, thinning, mowing, harvesting, and storage. Uh, bachelor's degree in agriculture or a related field would be helpful. Um, this is another one. This is, a, you know, an option in Minnesota, but you're going to be in the southern part of the state. So those are your two career connections for Chapter 15, Layering and Division. So we will see you next time.